So the Akakik Foundation was founded in 1957, and uh, since then we've been really telling the dominant narrative, the stories about uh, preservation of the view shed here. We were established to preserve the view from Mount Vernon, and we've spent a lot of time talking about the stories of the colonists here. And we're coming together through this Land and River series to really talk about the stories of the African American and Native American people and all the marginalized stories that took place on this landscape. So it's not just about the national colonial farm, it's about the indigenous cultural landscape that was preserved, it's about the civil rights movement, it's about Jim Crow, it's about the American Indian movement. Um, there are so many different stories encapsulated in this landscape and we really want to help uh, lift them all up and bring people together for dialogue. So that's what this series is about, is bringing people together to talk about um, the complex and challenging issues that related to our history and the legacy of those uh, histories that we carry with us and how we can come together to get to a different place. Is there a way we can turn that gaze around? Where we reflect back on, we take Mount Vernon into our shed. For Native people in this place, it's not about looking across the river. It's about what's in the river. It's about what's in the land. It's about the bodies that are buried here. It's about the soil being made out of the blood and bones of our ancestors that, that have been here forever. You know, our people are the land and the land is the people. Share our stories with people who, who want to listen. 
Um, so it's, it's just, from our perspective, to look at that blending of <coughs> what makes an opportunity now, where, you know, I'm a farmer now, and my grandmother had interesting things to say, you know, about me becoming a farmer, when she and Cosmo even had worked their asses off to get everybody off the farm. Like, you know, I said, you know, two times ago, the arc of black progress is supposed to go away from the plantation, not back to the plantation, where now I am literally farming on a plantation. Like, I am at Robert E. Lee's estate. <laughs> farming my ass off and making plenty of money doing it. So, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of this odd thing where these two things blend, and that's something that has to sit in our bodies all the time, um, especially people who, who decide to return to the land. Um, and reconciling that, that inter interconnectedness between pain and potential pain. So it's interconnected, and in order for us to heal, there needs to be that understanding of the history, of how we got to where we are, because when we try to just focus on the present and um, not peel back those layers to understand why there's conflict, why there's economic disparity, um, why there are the challenges that we have, we don't make the progress that we need to make. The idea is rather than having an institution telling the story about the community, we want the community to be able to tell the stories for themselves. I think Chris's point is really important and the National Park Service in particular is really invested in making people understand that the American Indian communities that are here today are still thriving and vibrant and part of this. I think part of the problem that we have with interpretation from a historic content is it's very colonized in terms of putting everything into compartments and thinking of things in a linear progression. We have to break away from that in order to include all the different types of ways of thinking about the landscape. And um, I've heard that um, uh, we want to tell stories, or we would like to see Akiki Creek tell stories, not necessarily about Washington, not necessarily colonial stories, depending on where you sit in the landscape. Um, climate change, I heard, was of interest. Um, the one-on-one, -on -one, heard that repeatedly, this idea of the visceral experience, the one-on-one, -on -one, that you had mentioned a couple of other people, and then providing these opportunities for people um, to feel welcome. So those were some of them. I know that they're just small nuggets, but I think that they are something that we can build on, or that the Akaki Creek Foundation, Akaki Foundation can build on. Every time I go down to collect water for laundry, I see his tear-streaked face. That was four years ago. My husband is gone. My son has been sold away. I just want him to die. So at the end of the event, what we hope people will come away with is a better understanding and sense of what's happened in the past uh, so that we really connect with each other in ways that are authentic and truthful so that we're telling a more uh, complicated story about what happened. There aren't really any easy answers to some of the challenges that we face and some of the things that we've been through together. And so understanding uh, what's happened in the past and how we can work together to be in a different place and how we can really understand each other better to address um, contemporary issues as well as historic and legacy challenges.